Some in Athens believe that an open field battle against the Persians is suicide. But one Athenian disagrees. His name is Miltiades, and he has a personal history with the Persians. He's forced into military service. Now wielding a Persian sword, he must fight along his conquerors. Finally, after three long years in Scythia, Miltiades decided he'd had enough. Miltiades flees to Athens, but he's not welcome there either. The people of Athens still remember Miltiades as a tyrant and lock him up the first chance they get. The Persians send heralds to Athens and demand payment of customary taxes. The Athenians throw them into a pit to die. Athens has spit in the face of the world's most powerful empire. For the Persians, Marathon is about more than just a broken treaty. It's also punishment for Athens' support of a revolution against Persia 10 years earlier in nearby Ionia. Miltiades chooses to face the Persian blade. And rather than hide behind the walls of Athens, he wants to meet the Persians on the battlefield. And the first major battle is Marathon, where more than 20,000 Persian infantry, cavalry, and archers are preparing to burn Athens to the ground. The Athenian general Miltiades and 10,000 Greek infantrymen are colossally overmatched. But Miltiades does have one advantage. 490 BC, it's the Athenian Greeks versus the mighty Persians on the plains of Marathon. The Persians draw first with a devastating arrow attack. Thousands of Persian arrows, very few Athenian casualties. And despite being outnumbered two to one, the Athenians, led by General Matiades, taunt the Persians. Battle rages that will alter the course of Western civilization. The Athenians' primary weapon is the heavy ashwood spear called the dory. Seven feet long, tipped with sharpened iron, the dory can smash through shields and armor. This spear is not thrown. It's used to stab the enemy with a gruesome thrust. Some, however, wear heavy, rigid cuirasses, bronze plates sculpted to look like a muscular torso. Bronze helmets with distinctive horsehair plumes protect their heads, while greaves protect their lower legs. In full battle gear, the hoplites are armored head to toe. Now they are holding fast against the Persian light infantry. But an effective one, as the Persian light infantry doesn't even dent the Athenian wall. In addition to their brutal killing ability, the presence of the immortals forces Miltiades to change his tactics. The battle is so intense that some Greeks report crazed visions of ghost warriors who crash through the lines and cut down men at random. In a daring stroke of military brilliance, Miltiades has completely turned the tables on the Persians. The Battle of Marathon has become a Persian bloodbath. More than 6,000 Persians perish, while the Athenians lose fewer than 200.
What likely happened is Miltiades and his men rested until they were able to go back on the offensive. Fighting breaks out again as the Persian rear guard tries to protect the retreat. Athenians butcher them and capture seven of the fleeting boats. The Battle of Marathon tells the ancient world that Persia isn't invincible. It serves as a battle cry for future rebellions throughout the empire. Greece and Persia will continue to clash on and off for the next hundred years. The struggle catapults Greece from obscurity into the center stage of the ancient world. It all begins on the plains of Marathon.